Fred Freeman with the CBB Group. In today's video, we're going to discuss how to buy a business and actually calculate the size and cash flow of a business that you should be looking for. Bill and I over the years have put together what we call a six-step process of a buyer's self-assessment scorecard. So if you're looking for a business or thinking about buying, this video is for you. So there are four basic topics or questions you need to be able to answer before we get into the step-by-step -step analysis. And the first one is, are you buying a business as an investment or are you buying the business as an owner-operator? Now, if you're buying the business as an investment, you're probably going to have a different set of financial returns required to buy a business, i.e. you're going to be looking for a return on investment um, on your initial down payment, somewhere in the neighborhood of between 15 and 20 percent and you're looking for a business that has a turnkey management team in place so that uh, to run the day-to-day -day operations. Now, if you're looking to buy a business as an owner-operator, the big question, and this is one where you have to be incredibly honest with yourself, is how much money uh, do I need for owner's compensation to pay all my bills at home and have a little left over for those uh, unexpected ups and downs in life? The, if you don't do that, what you'll end up doing is shorting yourself and uh, maybe take shorting your bills at home and or shorting the company in order to cover those bills at home. So when looking at this question, try and calculate what it takes to pay your bills at home, include things like health care, 401k um, contributions, and if you've got kids that you're putting, uh, trying to save to put through school at a later date, include those calculations. But be conservative. It is really important for uh, you to be able to get a good night's sleep uh, every night um, and to be able to operate the business as you should on a go-forward basis. And then the next question is really how much money do you have to cover the down payment, closing cost, and maybe some additional working capital that would go into the business. And the last one is what are your skill sets? Um, and this is something that the lenders, especially SBA, will take a look at, i.e. What specific skill sets do you have in management, in business experience that could be transferable to um, a, a business outside of the industry you currently work with? So if you're a mid-level manager managing uh, four or five different departments, you'll probably be able to look at a broader array of business types than say somebody who is a contractor, have worked for a contractor, and you know wouldn't be probably suitable to go look for a high-tech business. So with that said, those are the four things that you really need to think about in answer um, to move to step one. So we're going to assume for this slide that you've just you're an owner operator and that the income that you need, um, including health care, on a yearly basis is $120,000 and that you've got $300,000 to cover the down payment, closing costs, and working capital in a 401k or IRA account, and that you're a mid-level manager with 20 years experience. So let's, with those variables answered, let's go to step one of the buyer's self-assessment scorecard. The first step after you've answered those four basic questions is to calculate the amount of seller's discretionary cash flow that's required to meet your owner compensation requirements. Now from an earlier video, we talked about the definition of a seller's discretionary cash flow. And that really is the cash flow that the business puts off by calculating or starting with the pre-tax earnings of the company to that adding the owner's compensation, um, health benefits if the company's paying them, any personal perks, car, um, 
boats, airplanes, things of that nature, um, as well as interest, depreciation, and amortization. And when you get that final number, that is the cash flow that the business generates that a new borrower or owner could use to pay themselves a compensation and acquisition financing. So to figure that, we've come up with a little bit of a formula from our 20 to 30 years of experience of putting uh, business transactions together. And that is you start with your owner's compensation. In this case, it was 120,000. Uh, you times that by a multiple of 2.5. And that 2.5 times 120, in this case, will give you $300,000 worth of seller's discretionary cash flow that the business that you're going to be looking for would uh, be required to have in order to meet your uh, owner's compensation requirements. So, step two, um, and that is calculating the enterprise value or the purchase price of the target uh, company that you'd like to uh, pursue. So, let's use the seller's discretionary cash flow of 300000 and then take a multiple, a range of multiples between 2.75 and 3.0. So, let's calculate that out. It 300,000 times two and a half equals an enterprise value of 825,000, and 300,000 times three equals 900,000. So that gives you a range of value or purchase prices that you want to take a look at in taking targeting an acquisition. In this next slide, we're going to combine step three and step four. So let's think about the um, cash required as far as a down payment. So your purchase price, and let's use that $900,000 um, uh, and the seller's discretionary cash flow of three hundred. So 15% down payment on the 900000 which is pretty much a standard SBA down payment, would equal 135000 Now in most transactions, we see a seller take a seller's note for about 10% of the purchase price. So in this case, the 900 times 10% would give you $90,000. Now the monthly interest rate payments uh, for a $90,000 note at 5.875 uh, interest over 10 years would equal uh, $993,000. Now for the, the SBA loan amount, um, of 675,000, the monthly P&I would be $741,000. So here in step three and four, we've calculated part of the cash required uh, to purchase your down payment and the P&I numbers uh, for both the SBA loan and the seller note. So in step five, we actually take all of the variables that we've come up with, the $900,000 purchase price, the owner's compensation, and the debt service to see if it actually pencils out uh, for no, not only you, but as well as a lender that we, uses this calculation on a routine basis as part of their loan evaluation process. So let's go through the numbers. Remember, in this case, you've got a $900,000 purchase price, owner compensation requirement of $10,000, an SBA monthly payment of principal and interest of $7,451, seller note payment of $993,000, and that gives you $18,444. You then take that away from the monthly net profit or the seller's discretionary cash flow divided by 12, and that gives you a net cash of $6,566. 
To calculate the debt coverage ratio, you take the total amount of the owner's compensation and SBA and seller note payments into the net monthly profit, and that gives you a ratio, in this case, of 1.36 to 1. Now, like I said earlier, the lenders will be running this ratio as part of their loan calculation. So the higher the calculation or the higher the debt coverage ratio, the more discretionary net cash the business has at the end of every month and the better and more comfortable you should feel. So in this case, this is uh, ample for what uh, a $900,000 business looks like, especially with a owner's compensation of about $120,000. So step six, closing costs. Now we already know what your down payment's gonna be, but let's figure out the rest of the closing costs uh, for cash to close calculations. And the first one is an SBA loan fee. Um, the lenders usually charge a $1,500 packaging fee. They'll want to order an independent third-party business valuation. That's about $2,500. As well as a personal home appraisal as the lender will most likely want to take uh, or put a lien against your house for part of the collateral. So that comes in at around uh, uh, $4,500 altogether. Due diligence, legal, and escrow are the next set of fees that you'll need to think about. Due diligence, um, that could be you hiring an accountant or some other trusted advisor to help you review the documents uh, that'll be required to submit to the lender and make sure that you don't have any surprises with the business. Legal fees, um, that can range for a business this size between say 3,500 to 7,500. Uh, We've used the higher just to estimate. And then escrow should run about $1,200. So you've got total due diligence, legal and escrow fees of around $10,200. So it's time to kind of add everything up. Total cash to close. So your down payment was 135,000. Lenders fees were a little over 4,500. Due diligence, legal, and escrow of about 10,000. And then we've added in one more component and that's working capital of about 50,000. Now you, it depends on the negotiations that you do and what the seller is planning on leaving in the business. But for a business uh, 900 to a million dollars, you should probably plan on adding anywhere from 20 to $50,000 of working capital into the business to make sure you've got enough to run the business. So with that said, total cash to required on a conservative basis is just under $200,000 for this business. So in conclusion, a buyer that is looking to buy a business that has $300,000 in capital to invest and a requirement of $120,000 a year in compensation will probably need between $150,000 to $200,000 to get a transaction at $900,000 closed. Now that really just depends on the amount of working capital that may be needed to uh, be injected after closing. So that gives you uh, between $100,000 and $150,000 worth of capital after the purchase that you either can put in reserve, uh, apply as additional down payment, thus uh, increasing the cash flow and de decreasing the leverage, as well as consider actually buying a larger business. So I hope this video helps if you're a first time business buyer. Uh, please feel free to give either myself or Bill Billingsley a call. We'd be more than happy to spend 20 uh, minutes with you on the phone discussing the various topics around purchasing a business. Again, we're also more than happy to send you our workbook that goes along with our workshop uh, for 
buyers sellers so in closing I hope you found this helpful and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.